How's it going everyone? It's Sam. We have some real clown world type events happening here today. We have some FTX ex-employees that were really high up in the company now looking to raise capital for new ventures. We have CEOs of now bankrupt companies going on the defensive or going on the offensive, depending on how you think about it actually, talking about how really they just went bankrupt because of FTX and how FTX really is the reason for uh, a lot of the turmoil in the crypto markets, but they're not giving themselves any of the blame. I also want to answer a question from the audience and uh, kind of a thought on my last video. We also have a couple really important levels and some actually some positive news to look for and some big events that are happening this coming week. So if you don't mind hitting the subscribe button underneath the video, I appreciate that. There's also a link underneath the video to Patreon. In case you want to ask me personal questions, you can do that through the Patreon. So Bitcoin is still at the same level, right under 17,000. That's been pretty much all week. We'll look at it here in a second, but I want to cover some of the news first. FTX US ex-president reportedly seeks $6 million funding to launch crypto startup. So Brett Harrison is reported is reportedly planning to launch a startup that would build crypto trading software for investors. Now he's looking for $6 million and this would be 10% of the 60 million dollar valuation and this is to like found the company it's not it doesn't sound like at least like he has anything really started already it sounds like right now that he is uh just starting the company and is slapping a 60 million dollar valuation on it seems pretty lofty especially in a bear market that someone would try to set this kind of valuation for a company that really isn't doing anything yet and to be fair ftx wasn't very good at trading either. I mean, even when they had God mode, right, where they gave themselves the ability to not get liquidated at FTX, not FTX US, to be fair, but FTX, they still were in the hole. They still went bankrupt. Now, Brett Harrison actually left the company or left his position, I should say, a month before uh, the whole thing started, actually about a month and a half before FTX started to go down. And he says that he was surprised and saddened by today's news. Now, he was on FTX US's side, so he might not have known as much. But I've got to think, if you're the president of FTX.US, you know a good amount about what's happening with FTX and Alameda. Uh, he moved over to an advisory role after this. So it's amazing <laughs> what he's trying to do. I, I think if it was me, I would not give him any of this money. I think he probably knew and just... That's why he left. He saw too many sketchy things happening. So good on him, I guess, for leaving. But also, he probably could have done more to try to stop it. And then going from one clown to the next, uh, Alex Mashinsky. He was the CEO of Celsius, which went bankrupt. He says, Genesis slash DCG should take responsibility for much of the bear market after recklessly lending and trading with the largest leverage players, including $2.4 billion loans to 3AC, several billion in OTC to Luna, plus $1 billion to FTX and Alameda, and then lending over $5 billion for leverage GBTC sham trades. This is after a post about crypto broker Genesis owes the crypto exchange Gemini $900 million. Now, he obviously led a, sh a sinking ship, but he does blame it on FTX. FTX experiences losses from giving traders margin on crap coins. FTX uses Alameda to fill the hole by posting FTT. FTX excludes Alameda from auto liquidation from FTT price drop to avoid a death spiral. Alameda uses God mode to short coins like sell and avoid posting collateral. Uh, I, I think that he has some real kahunas for uh, posting all this crap about other companies when he allowed his company to go down and it was one of the first ones to go down. Of course, he's going to blame FTX for shorting sell, but also you have to realize the risk of having your own coin and you have to be able to weather that storm in case your price does drop. You shouldn't just go bankrupt if someone shorts your coin, even with a lot of money. You know, you should have reserves. You should, you should be able to weather a little bit better than they did. So another person from the industry just pointing fingers. So it's amazing to see these people come out. Now, I think overall we could see more 
more liquidations. We could definitely see more downside, but we are at a really interesting time in crypto. Bitcoin is under the 300 week moving average. This is basically like a six year moving average, even we're actually under the six year right now. So this 300 week is at 18,000. The 200 week, which is something that we typically don't stay under for more than a few weeks in a bear market is up around 24,000. So I think we are relatively cheap. And I've been saying that for a while, but this is also an interesting time because the S&P 500, you can see here, uh, if we went to the daily, it'd be a little bit easier to see, but we've come off these uh, and got rejected by this trend line several times in the past, pretty much all year long. And now we are testing it again. Now we would have to go up about one to 2% right now to break through it or to be right at it again. But uh, this is right before we also get some big news, which is the PPI coming out December 9. So that's coming out this Friday. We have the CPI coming out November or uh, December 13 for November. So just a few days after the PPI. PPI is a leading indicator. So it is good to see kind of uh, what these producers are spending in money before the consumers get hit with the cost increases. So we're gonna see those and then we will have the next Fed meeting uh, and they'll tell us how much we're raising rates by. Now, this was kind of a negative on, what was that, Thursday or Friday? Uh, Friday, uh, we added 263,000 new jobs in November and unemployment was steady at 3.7%. The Fed has talked about how they're gonna raise rates until unemployment comes up. So a lot of people take that as a, that as a negative and we also saw an increase in incomes, but, Assuming inflation comes down and the Fed is less aggressive, the fact is if we still have a really strong jobs market, that is good overall for the economy. The reason it's not good right now is because we're worried about stocks and crypto being negatively affected because they think that the Fed won't, won't uh, stop raising rates as aggressively. But again, if the problem is gone, uh, the inflation, and we still have good jobs numbers, that is the best case scenario. That's what we're really hoping for. So. Hopefully, inflation continues to come down faster than expected. And then if we could still keep good jobs numbers, maybe we actually do have that soft landing that the government's talking about. Now, I don't know how likely that is, but that is the goal, I think, overall. That would be the best case scenario. Now, a couple other things I want to hit on before we get to the end. Uh, we have, like I said, Bitcoin at a very low price. I think one risk factor right now that's not really focused as much on price, but just risk factor for crypto in general is concentration. We have a couple companies that are buying up all the bankrupt companies assets, but we did get some good news today. I think Binance is probably the one that everyone's worried about because they have so much volume, but Galaxy Digital just won an auction to buy GK8 from Celsius. So it is nice to see another company buying a large amount of assets and IP uh, that's not Binance. So this is a self-custody platform that was actually acquired by Celsius about a year ago, but now because of the bankruptcy at Celsius, now, uh, now they're gonna be bought out by Galaxy. So Celsius bought them for 115 million last November, but we don't know how much uh, Galaxy is buying it for right now, but they are gonna add about 40 jobs uh, so that is positive, I think. Again, just to have some diversification away from away from Binance. Now, Bitcoin seems like it's in an interesting place. Like I said, it's really boring right now. We have it just trading sideways uh, for the last really six months, and then it fell because of FTX and some liquidations, of course, too. But if you look here, uh, with the price of Bitcoin going down, the surging of Bitcoin and crypto has pretty much stayed sideways, just kind of trickled down as well. We saw a little bit of a bump around FTX, but then it's fallen down again. So I, I've talked with several people on crypto YouTube as well and just YouTube finance, and we're seeing the same thing, right? We're seeing less and less views because it's just this boring time in the market. A lot of people that were maybe here a few months ago are just kind of bored now. They're not tuning in as much. So this is typically a great time to be accumulating. When price is down, when uh, people aren't really searching for it, aren't keeping up with the news as much, typically that is a good time to be paying attention and again, accumulating for the long term. Now, I think the best case for crypto is the PPI comes in solid, the CPI comes in solid, 
the Fed stops raising so aggressively. And then because of this, uh, the market starts to turn around. So eventually the Fed stops raising so aggressively. Maybe they even turn. I think once they start raising by less, just even this next meeting, if they raise by 50 basis points, and then they say, hey, we're going to keep it at 50 for one more, and then we go 25, 25, and then we just wait or something like that. Uh, the terminal rate is coming down. People are expecting a lot less and less that we're going to get to you know, 6%, 7%, 10, uh 8%, 9%. Some people think we need to get up to that kind of uh, rate increase before the overall market uh, or before the inflation comes down. So if we get up to that point and then start lowering next year, right? I think that's really best case scenario. Now, of course, if we did it faster, that'd be great. But I, the market will start to price this in early. The market wants to price this in months ahead of time. If we knew exactly what rates were going to be for the next year, the market would price that in pretty much right away. Now, of course, we need good earnings, but it sounds like earnings might be pretty good. We have a very strong consumer. We still have a lot of um, money going into the household, right, with uh, with wage increases. We had record shopping numbers. So that, I think, is the best case scenario. Now, for crypto and Bitcoin, right, Honestly, the best case scenario for you is that the market turns around, but crypto doesn't move or maybe even gets worse, right? Maybe there's some liquidations. And of course, uh, I don't want that to happen. I don't want any more companies to go bankrupt because it will hurt more people to have money on exchanges. But that would kind of be the best case scenario for anyone trying to accumulate Bitcoin that doesn't have it on exchanges. Now, uh, for the overall community, I think if we just stayed here, we didn't have much more contagion you know, Genesis gets a loan, all that works itself out. There weren't tons of liquidations and we just stay sideways for a while while the rest of the market goes up. And then maybe six months from now or so, uh, people start pricing in the, the Bitcoin next halving and because that will be about a year away uh, in four or five months, right? I think it's April, 2024. So we start pricing that in, Bitcoin goes back up. Uh, you were able to accumulate for a long time that would be the best case scenario. And then of course, if you could buy some other altcoins that do well, and then we can start dollar cost averaging out on the way up, and you start taking some profits along the way, I think that's best case scenario. Now on one of my last videos, I was showing my dividend portfolio. It's about $14,000, and I got this uh, response. I would sell all your dividend stocks to buy Tesla dip. Then when Tesla goes back up, you can sell a portion to spread back into dividends. You won't regret it. Now, I said this was an interesting idea, and I'll talk about it in my next video. If you guys want to leave a comment underneath the video, I might answer it. Uh, try to wade through all the scammers, though. So uh, I, I understand where this person's coming from. You know, the thought premise behind it is basically, hey, Tesla has a lot of upside. It's down almost 50% from the high, maybe right around 50%. It has great upside potential. Uh, dividends they are being valued pretty rich right now, historically, compared to uh, some of these tech stocks. Usually tech stocks are selling at much higher price to earnings uh, compared to dividends, but now dividends, a lot of people are worried about the economy, so they're buying dividend stocks. So buy the Tesla dip, buy something that has a good amount of upside, sell out when it moves back up, and then buy more dividend stocks, and you can even keep some of your Tesla or just cash out. So I understand the premise, right? That's great to think in theory. However, uh, for this portfolio, I've been buying into this for two and a half years, $100 a week. And the goal behind this portfolio is not to try to trade in and out to try to get the best gains necessarily. It, it's really just a small portion of my overall stock portfolio. And I actually have much more Tesla stock than I do uh, stocks in this portfolio. I have more than $14,000 of Tesla. Now, this portfolio is specifically to buy and continue to accumulate wealth through dividends. I wanna get good, solid companies. I don't wanna to have to worry about it. I don't worry about the dividend portfolio at all right now. And while it does seem boring, and while it, some of these companies don't seem like they have maybe as much upside as Tesla, the fact is I do like these companies and I still think they're going to outperform the market. They are solid companies, really solid companies with good growth, with good fundamentals. So I'm gonna to continue to hold them, but I also really like Tesla stock. So I've been buying more than $100 of Tesla every single week. I'm averaging $100 into the dividend portfolio, but I'm averaging 
much more than that into Tesla stock itself. So if I was someone that didn't have this ability where I just had, let's say I just had this one portfolio, I just had uh, $14,000 in the stock market and I want to make the best uh, decision moving forward, I probably would diversify it. We're at a time where the market is really scared. We're seeing a lot of people pile into dividend stocks and people are scared of growth. I still think Tesla has great fundamentals. I did a full video on it, a half an hour video a few days ago. So if I had just the dividend portfolio, I probably would diversify and try to buy more tech stocks. I might still hold on to some of the dividend companies, but I would definitely diversify more into Tesla. I'd also probably buy Amazon and Google as well and Microsoft and Apple. So that's just my opinion. But if you want to ask me more questions or if you want to make suggestions like this so I can post them in future videos, comment underneath the video. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.